أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته On behalf of Masjid Al-Rahim I invite and welcome all of you to this very special Juma occasion We are indeed honored to have a very special guest amongst us who will perform the English lecture the khutbah and the salam I am Adam Haneke. I am the chairman of the Hidfin Madrasa Islamic Complex, including Masjid Al-Rahim. It has been a long struggle for the Muslims in the area to establish such a center. Alhamdulillah, we have been successful. Our guest speaker is none other than Sheikh Muhammad bin Yahya al Hussein al Manui. He was born and raised in Syria and he began his study under his father, Sayyid Rahya Rahimullah, and under many of the senior scholars of Aleppo Sharia. He memorized the glorious Quran and acquired knowledge in many of the Islamic disciplines. He attended the faculty of Usuluddin at al Zahra University, and he studied further in many branches of Hadith and Tawheed. The very basis of Sheikh's call is based on reviving the call basics, back to basics, that is the Quran and Sunnah. He emphasizes teaching tolerance, peace, and compassion. He is the senior in residence scholar at Medina Masjid, an institute in Atlanta, Georgia, America. He authored many books, and I'm not going to detail any of them. He is also the founding director of an institute called Planet Mercy and Medina Institute and Seminary in the UK, South Africa and Canada and the USA. Without any further delay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin al-sadiq al-wa'di al-ameen wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin wa radiyallahu an ashabih wa azwajih وأحبابه والتابعين أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله one more as if we're not hooked up hooked up already on all kinds of things I always say Allah تعالى's نعمة if those of you who remember 20 years ago we were not plugged to anything there was not even a phone in the house. What a ni'mah it was, huh? You will remember what I say. I think we are still sort of experiencing the after effects of the Isra and the Mi'raj. As you all know, I mean, the dates we all disagree with and it's okay to disagree with the dates because the dates are not as important as the event. When did Isra and Mi'raj take place? Since the Quran and the Sunnah did not give it in a specific way, makes no difference really when. Makes a difference that it did happen. But there are many things I think if we can reflect on the Isra and Mi'raj that we can take. Among them is this call, the very call of our deen, Deen al-Islam. Oftentimes people think that coming into the deen of Islam means something new that not, was not there before. And Al-Isra wal Mi'raj is an event that took place to sort of illustrate for all of us that Al Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa azwaji wa ashabi wa sallam was not bid'an min al rusul. He was not something that was strange to the line of Nubuwa since Adam alayhi salatu wa salam all the way through Nuh, through Ibrahim, Yaqub, all of them until Musa wa Isa wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That line was continuous and Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj takes us to the point where we see 
that the nubuwa is all one. Al hadith fi sahih al Bukhari Muslim, and Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us al anbiya'u ikhwa. All the brother, all the anbiya are brothers to the same mother. Deenuhum wahid, their deen is one. Wa ummahatuhum shatta. And their mothers are many, but their deen is just one. And when you look at that, you see that the deen of Islam that we are looking at and we are telling people, deen Islam, obviously, al Islam is a verb, not just a noun. A lot of people think that Islam is, I embrace Islam as a verb, as a noun. Versus Islam is really a verb by virtue of what Allah Ta'ala told Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ His Lord, yani Allah Jalla Jalla told Ibrahim, أَسْلِمْ Submit yourself, become Muslim in a sense, not that Ibrahim alayhi salam was ever not Muslim. لَا وَلْيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ Ibrahim was always Imam al-Muwahideen. From the beginning, even his early days, you know, when he was arguing, uh, when he was young with the people, with the one who raised him. إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ أَزَرَ تَتَّخِذُ أَصْنَامًا آلِهَا He told the one who was raising him, Azar, you taking idols instead of Allah, وَالْعَيَذُ بِاللَّهِ إِنِّي أَرَاكَ وَقَوْمَكَ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينَ Early when Ibrahim was young, he was telling all the people there that you people are wrong. لكن الله سبحانه وتعالى in this Isra and Mi'raj gave us this thing so we understand that this deen of Islam which is a verb إذ قال له ربه أسلم قال أسلمت لرب العالمين I submit to the Lord of the worlds and that's how Islam is the more you submit to Allah Ta'ala the more of a Muslim you are in the verb sense not in the noun sense in the noun sense it starts at أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله but the continuous thing is how submissive are you to Allah the more submissive you are the more you submit the more you're Muslim إذ قال له ربه أسلم الله أتول دم أسلم قال أسلم تلي رب العالمين I submit totally to the to Lord 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 of the worlds and you see يعني سيدنا إبراهيم عليه السلام الله تلز him here when he says أسلم تلي رب العالمين I became totally in submission to Allah you look at him from the beginning from when they threw him in the fire أسلم تلي رب العالمين total submission from when he was saw in the dream that he is Offering Ismail, his own son, as sacrifice. Aslam to, yani the meaning, he did not even say it, but you know it. It's to total submission to Rabbil Alameen. Even Ismail himself, qala ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. Satajiduni, inshallah, min al-sabirin. You'll find me amongst the sabirin. Yani al muslimin li Rabbil Alameen. Al sabr means what? There is two kinds of sabr. Sabr on the ta'a and sabr from doing ma'asiyah. Sabr on doing ta'a, because even ta'a requires you to do sabr, which means what? Yani your nafs doesn't want you to stand up for fajr. Sleep. Why not? You have to have sabr. Yet I did spend, I did stay up late, but I want to have that sabr. I need to have that patience, and I am going, and I have to have that submission, and I'm going to stand and do the salah. The same thing for the sabr on ma'asiyah. Ma'asiyah is calling you in every which direction. Like, can you have sabr from committing that ma'asiyah? So that sabr is on two kinds. Anyway, going back to the Isra and Mi'raj, you see in the journey of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the unity of the Anbiya alayhi wa sallam. Yani the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't just meet the Prophets only in Bayt al-Maqdis, or what is called Jerusalem in English. Right? They're gathered for him there at Bayt al-Maqdis. And that shows you the unity of the message of the prophets, alayhimu salatu wasalam. That shows you the unity of the prophets themselves as well. That you did not just come up from nowhere. No, no, no. You belong here. Your message. You are connected. You even in this time as a Muslim, you're connected to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam through Ibrahim all the way alayhi salam, all the way to Adam, Abu al-Khalq sallallahu taala alayhi wasallam. Your line is, is very, very deep in history. It's the beginning of humanity. You did not occur unto humanity. You're not a stranger to humanity. You belong to the father of humanity. 
and you go through all the fathers of yours until there. That line is always consistent. It was never inconsistent, which also means that the values that Islam brought all the way through, it's all the Anbiya were values for humanity. The values of sacrifice that Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam did, the values of, Ibra of, of, of truthfulness that Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam demonstrated, the value of trustworthiness that Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, the value of struggle and jihad that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam did, the values that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam encompassed all, all these values are values that the human beings all require in a sense to reach their full potential as human beings. Today I always say my dear beloved brothers and sisters, you can't buy principles in supermarkets. You can memorize things. You can memorize all you want, anything from Deen or Dunya, memorization are in books, books are open for all. But you can't buy principles. You can't buy, you can't memorize a pr the principle of truthfulness, nor can you purchase it. You can't memorize the principle of trustworthiness, nor can you purchase it. You can't memorize the principle of sacrifice and selflessness, nor can you purchase it. These principles are embodied in the prophets like Ibrahim wa Musa wa Isa wa Muhammad alayhim salatu was salam. You can only learn from them through observation of their model so you can try to imbibe. And that's why an Nabi al-Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us he's an Imam Muslim inna asdaq al-hadith kitab Allah ta'ala wa khayr al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the best of things is the book of Allah Ta'ala and the best of guidance. Why does he say Khayr al-Hadi? Oh, Khayr al-Hadi. Hadi means guidance. The best of guidance is the guidance of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because many people come up with guidance. People tell this, this is a guidance, this guidance, this guidance, that guidance. Let me give you a new way of guidance. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam insists that the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ That's the whole point. Because the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one that's safe and saving. Other ones are, they're experiencing. Do you, do you like to be there experiencing trials? So maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. Versus you have a way that وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ صِرَاطِ اللَّهِ Ya Rasulullah, you are the one that guides to Salat al-Mustaqim. That's, well, that's where the beauty of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that's the beauty of going back to the book and the Sunnah. And when you go back to the book and the Sunnah, you see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Isra and Mi'raj took you through the journey with the Anbiya, all of them. And it seems that they're all in that the same message, the same principles. Don't let anyone tell you that Musa alayhi salam had different principles than Isa, than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi ajma'een. No, no, no. Al-anbiya aw ikhwa, an nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. But that's not only where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met the anbiya. Al-hadith rawah al-imam al-nasai rahimahullah fi sunan wa huwa hasan. To say the least, it's not hasan. Wa asla hadith fi al-bukhari wa muslim, afwan fi muslim, also in, in part, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaves Mecca on the Buraq, he goes first to al Medina. Who Jibreel, he tells him, Hada al-Muhajar, this is Tayba. This is where you will migrate. Remember that the Isra was in Mecca. So the first trip is where, the first stop on the trip was fil Medina al-Munawwara. Jibreel tells him, Inzil, Fasalli, come ya Muhammad and pray. And he prays, he tells him, this is Tayba, this is Muhajar. This is where you will be migrating. Okay, they go to Egypt, Sinai. Tur Sina, Lafdul Imam al Nasai. He takes them. He goes all the way to Mount Sinai in Egypt today. He tells him, 
Ya Muhammad Inzel Fasalli. He comes and he prays Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sahbi wa Zwaji wa Sallam and he tells them this is where the Mount Sinai where Musa received the revelation from Allah. Tur Sina. Wattini wa Zaytuni wa Turi. Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is visiting a place and praying in it because that place was blessed by Musa Alayhi Salam and where Musa received the revelation from Allah. Look at that trip. Then he, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam moves then. Where does he take, where Jibreel is taking him also? He goes to where he says, Inzil Fasalli, where? He says, this is where Isa alayhi salam was born. The mawla, the place of birth of Isa salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa comes and prays in the place where Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam was born. Also an indication of the importance of the event and the place associated with it. Otherwise, the whole earth is a musalla. Yani ju'ilat li al-ardu. The whole earth is made masjid for me. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Like and he comes and prays in these specific places and you see so he stops in Sinai. Then he goes where the birth of Sayyidina Isa is and also prays there. Then he goes to Al-Aqsa. Hadith fi Sahih Muslim. Others. Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih. He says, Laylata usriya bi. The day I went or the night I went into Isra, I stopped by Musa alayhi salam's grave. مَرَرْتُ عَلَى مُوسَى He says, في صحيح مسلم, لفظ مسلم يعني فإذا هو قائم يصلي في قبره It seems that in his قبر he was praying. And Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم stopping by Musa. Not only, not only where the tour of Mount Sinai where Musa عليه السلام was receiving the, 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 the revelation from Allah. He also stopped where Musa عليه السلام's grave. And that's also an indication. Many people they still don't know where Musa's grave is. Well, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah took him to where Musa's grave is. That also to show you the connection of the Anbiya. Then they gather all together. So he sees them in one dimension. In the dimension of Musa was in the, in the Barzakh. Then he comes in the Barzakh. They all come and they see him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Masjid Al-Aqsa. And they pray. Then Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he goes all the way to heavens and he sees Musa again and he sees Isa again and they're moving in this world of Barzakh and that dimension of Barzakh from one place one before that Musa was praying in his grave then Musa was then behind him sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the masjid praying and he describes him sallallahu alaihi wasallam he describes how Musa looked or how Ibrahim looked so the Sahaba asked him how did Musa look he tells them huh? like he's a man who is uh, uh, from uh, one of the tribes of Yemen. Then he's, they tell him, how about Ibrahim? Ibrahim looked different than Musa. Huh? He's not, a, he did not have the Yemeni look. They said, Ya Rasulullah, how did Ibrahim look? He says, Sahibukum, yours sincerely, yani, is the one who resembles Ibrahim most. Look at that. Ajib. Musa, ya Rasul, Musa looks like a Yemeni man from the Qabila in Yemen. And how about Ibrahim Abu Al-Anbiya? He says, the one who resembles Ibrahim most is me. So these, he, de he tells them all these descriptions. He goes to heavens. He sees them all again in a different dimension. Amongst the things, again, it shows us, I want to sort of shed the light on, that you as a Muslim did not come with something new to humanity. This is the same message that Adam السلام, came with. It's the same message that Musa السلام, came with. It's the same message that Isa السلام, came with. It's the same message that Ibrahim السلام, came with. You did not bring something new to this humanity. You did not bring new principles to this humanity. You are only reviving the principles that your grandfathers and great-grandfathers and ancestors and your first father, Ibra Ibrahim, and the father before him, Nuh, and the father before him, Adam, brought to this world and shared with this humanity. The objective was happiness of humanity. That's what Islam wants. Islam wants to offer everyone the opportunity to be happy, only if they want to be. La ikraha fi You don't want to be happy? Don't be happy. 
we will still pray for you to be happy even if you reject no problem because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not ask us to force that kind of thing onto you for he enabled you to make a choice and since he in his divine wisdom enabled all human beings to make a choice and afforded them dignity as per such Adam, Allah says we've honored all the children of Adam merely for being human beings honored regardless who you are in Islam regardless your of your background of your creed of your ethnicity you have you are dignified because you are a human being but Islam wishes you to be happy offers you the opportunity to be happy just like Adam up until our Prophet Sallallahu did and if you do then Alhamdulillah that's good if you don't Islam still prays for you to be happy and continues to pray for you to be happy and that's the and all the anbiya some people all asked he said one one person who embraced islam from christianity let me just finish with this he says but i don't want to drop jesus i want to believe in muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but i don't want to drop Jesus. i said ya who told you you need to drop jesus in islam you don't subtract you add you don't lose. Doesn't Allah says, "Amen, the Messenger, by what He revealed to Him, the Lord and the Messenger." All of us are in agreement with Allah and the Messenger and His books. And we are not going to divide between any of His Messengers. We don't distinguish. It's not us that we make distinctions and discriminations amongst the prophets. Islam is not a discriminatory religion. We don't say you believe only in this one and you don't believe in the other one. No, no, no. Islam, you don't lose. You add. You don't lose, you gain. You don't lose Isa alayhi salam or Musa alayhi salam, Jesus or Moses. You gain to them Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, the final and the end of all prophets. That's the beauty. That's when everything is complete. Other than that, then the house is not complete. That house of prophecy. So therefore, amongst the things that we take benefits from this is that you are connected to the line, the line of the Anbiya. All of us, all the Muslims in the world are connected to the complete line of the Prophets, stretching all the way to the very first human Allah created, Adam alayhi salatu wassalam. You are not stranger to earth. You come from that father who Allah sent him as a Khalifa on earth. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al يا معاشر المسلمين أنصتوا رحمكم الله واستمعوا يغفر لكم الله لنا ولكم ولوالدينا ولوالديكم ومشايخنا ومشايخكم وأستاذنا وأستاذكم ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم قال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره نستعين به جل وعلا نستهديه ونستغفره نعوذ به سبحانه وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا شيء قبله ولا شيء بعده مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وعبد الله ربه حتى أتاه اليقين صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله في كل آن وحين وارض اللهم عن أصحابه وأزواجه وأحبابه والتابعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله أحثكم وإياها على طاعته أحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته جل وعلا ومعصيته أما بعد يقول ربنا في المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين بلى إن الله تعالى أحكم الحاكمين وقد قال رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وسلم فيما أخرجه الشيخان بإسنادهما الأنبياء إخوة فهذه رسالة الإسلام أيها الأحبة مترابطة بين الأنبياء جميعا متواصلة فيما بينهم إلى رب العالمين بحبل متين أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يعلقنا بهذا الحبل ويصلنا به إنه سميع كريم مجيب أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه يغفر لكم اللهم صل وسلم وجلالك ولكمالك على أشرف محمد سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه وأزواجه وأولاده ورضي الله على كل صحابي أجمعين برحمتك أرحمه وأرحمه والحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر أشهد أن سيدنا محمدا صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأزواجه وسلم الشفيع المشفع في المحشر صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله أهل الفقه والنظر والعلم والأثر وعلى من بآثاره مقتفى واهتدى واعتبر عباد الله اتقوا الله العظيم حق تقواه راقبوه مراقبة من يعلم ويعتقد بأنه يراه تزودوا من دنياكم لآخرتكم عملا يحبه ويرضاه اعلموا أنه لا يضر وينفع ويعطي ويمنع ويخفض ويرفع ويصل ويقطع إلا الله واعلموا أن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه قال تعالى ولم يزل قائلا عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صلني على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين أعلي يا مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فأوفقه إليه 
من أراد بهم غير ذلك فهده يا ربنا سواء السبيل آتي أنفسنا تقواها زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها شف اللهم مرضانا عاف مبتلانا فك أسرانا ارحم موتانا اغفر اللهم لنا ولوالدينا ولمشايخنا ولأصحاب الحقوق علينا ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب للدعوات وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله أقم الصلاة